when you create more services of load balancer types, that's gonna create a dedicated load balancer for each of the service. So a better practice is to create an ingress that defines routing rules to different services based on domains or paths. So the ingress essentially load balances your traffic and handles TLS termination, meaning it enables HTTPS traffic to your cluster. So there are only three things that you have to do to make this happen. You first have to deploy an ingress controller. In our case, we're gonna be deploying an Nginx ingress controller and you have to have a domain and then you can define and apply the ingress resource, which defines the routing rules to different services you might have. So without further ado, let's go ahead and deploy the ingress controller. I'm gonna use Helm to install the Ingress Nginx manifest. And if you don't have Helm and you are on macOS, you can install it using brew. And once you have Helm, you can do Helm repo at Ingress Nginx that already exists on my machine. And then you can do Helm search repo to see different versions available for you. So you can see the latest version we have is 1.10 and a chart version 4.10.0. So the version of Ingress Nginx you wanna use depends on the version of the Kubernetes cluster you have. In my case, I'm using 1.29.1, and if you go to the Ingress Nginx repo, that's gonna show you different supported version of your cluster for different Ingress Nginx version. So I do wanna to stick to the latest version of Ingress Nginx, and to install the Ingress Nginx manifest in your directory, you can do Helm template Ingress Nginx, specify the version and the namespace you want to create this in. Before I press enter, I do want to create an Ingress Nginx directory here. And once I press enter, that's gonna install the Ingress Nginx manifest for us. And all you need to do now is create a namespace called Ingress Nginx, and we can apply this Ingress Nginx YAML file. And then if we have a look at what's inside this Ingress Nginx namespace, we can see this Ingress Nginx controller is being created. So we can check again to see if it's running. So now the Ingress Nginx controller is running, and the next thing we have to do is define our ingress resource. So I'm gonna create this user API ingress. And if you look up ingress on the Kubernetes docs, it's gonna have a minimal ingress resource example. So I'm just gonna copy this here and paste it here. So I'm first gonna name my ingress as ingress user API and say my ingress class name to be nginx. And then we define our rules here where we specify which service we want to route our traffic to depending on the path that the user tries to access. So if we have a look at our cluster, we have our user API service of load balancer type here. So we want to specify user API service on a user API path. But first, before I forget, I do want to reapply my service um, because I don't want this to be of load balancer type anymore. So by default, it's gonna go with the cluster IP type, but I don't have to specify because as I said, it's by default. So I'm gonna delete this user API service and apply this service YAML again. So when I get these services, now the user API service is of cluster IP type, and we have a single load balancer service for the Ingress Nginx controller. So if you remember from the diagram earlier, we're gonna have a single ingress and a single external load balancer that routes traffic to your services of cluster IP type. So let's come back to our ingress user API. And there are a few more important things that we want to add here. First, we do want to make this path type to be implementation specific. And you are going to realize that all we can do right now is to route traffic 
on the user API path to the user API service. But for each service, it's going to have different endpoints defined for them. Let's imagine you're trying to access the cluster and you have different services within that cluster. And as we define in our ingress resource, we can say on the user API path, direct our traffic to this user API service. But this user API service can have its own endpoints like getting the users and creating the user. So when a client tries to access the get users endpoint, we want it to be redirected to the get users endpoint of the user API service. And to make this happen, as I just explained, we need to define capture groups. So this is going to look like this. And we're going to add a dollar two sign here. So we have this capture group that matches either a four slash or a dollar sign, meaning it's the end of the URL. And then it's also going to match any characters that follow the slash if there is any. And whatever value that's captured here will be assigned to this dollar two sign placeholder. So now when the client tries to access the user API, get users endpoint, this will be rewritten to the get users endpoint. And this is the endpoint that our service is going to recognize. But we're not done here yet. We just have to specify the host as well. And I'm going to add my domain here, which is cluster demo .life. And this is the domain I purchased here. Um, you can purchase your domain from Namecheap or GoDaddy or some of the other domain registrars. And all I did here is to configure the domain to point to DigitalOcean name servers. And if you're using some other cloud provider, they're going to have their own name service that you could point to. So once you add your host, you can simply go ahead and apply this ingress. But before we can make requests to this endpoint, we actually have to add an A record to our domain so that our domain points to the IP of the load balancer of our ingress controller. So if you're on DigitalOcean, you can come to this networking tab and add your domain here. And once you add your domain, you can add an A record for your domain and point it to the IP of the load balancer you have. So this IP is from the ingress controller load balancer service, which is 45.55 and so on. So I'm simply going to create a record here. So now when we try to access this domain, that should direct our traffic to the IP, which is our ingress controller. Let's try to make a curl request to that domain and see if everything's working and everything is working as expected. However, as you can see, this is not an encrypted traffic and we do want to access our cluster using encrypted traffic with HTTPS. And that does bring us to the next topic to deploy our cert manager, which automates issuance and renewal of TLS certificates to secure our ingress. So getting a certificate could involve sending a certificate signing request to the certificate authority, which is let's encrypt in this example. And for that, we also have to fulfill the let's encrypt challenge. I won't go into detail on how the let's encrypt challenge works, but I'll share a link to a page that describes how this works. And all we have to do to make this happen is to deploy the cert manager, deploy the issuer object, which defines the certificate authority to sign the certificate, which will be let's encrypt in this example. And lastly, deploy the certificate object, which is the actual certificate request in a human readable format. So let's come back to VS code. And I want to create a directory, call it cert manager. So I'm going to CD into the Kubernetes cert manager, and I'm going to install the cert manager manifest from this URL here. So when I run that, that's going to install the cert manager YAML for us. And just like what we did for the ingress nginx, we can create a namespace for our cert manager. 
and then we can simply apply this cert manager YAML file. And as you can see, a bunch of custom resource definitions, uh, cluster role bindings, and deployments, and so on have been created. And we can see what's in this um, cert manager namespace. And we can see the cert manager pod has been deployed along with the CA injector and the webhook. Now, under the cert manager directory, what we have to do is define our issuer. And if you look up on let's encrypt issuer, for the cert manager, you're going to see a basic Acme issuer um, sample that's available for us. So I'm just going to copy this here and paste that here for reference. And I'm first going to name this Let's Encrypt Issuer. So inside the Acme field of the cluster issuer, we want to specify our email and the Acme server. So we can use the staging Acme server like how they have here, or we can just use the Acme v02 API and so on. And this is actually available from the Let's Encrypt page as well. So you can simply use this URL here. And then we specify the private key secret reference. So this is the secret resource that will be used to store the account's private key. And I'm just going to name this let's encrypt issuer key. And lastly, we want to specify what challenge we're going to solve to prove that this domain belongs to us. So if you're not familiar with let's encrypt, there is a page on how this works. So the reason we have to do this challenge is to prove to the certificate authority that the web server controls the domain. So they give us two different options to prove that this domain belongs to us. And that is one by provisioning a DNS record under our domain, or we provision an HTTP resource under a well-known URI on our domain. But all of this is going to be automated by the cert manager. So we don't have to worry about what's happening under the hood. So now we are only left with creating the certificate object, which is the human readable definition of our certificate request. So under the cert manager directory, I'm going to create the certificate YAML file. And there is an example on the certificate object on the cert manager website as well. So I'm just going to copy this bit here and paste it and name my certificate user API cert. And here we can specify the secret name and I'm going to name this user API TLS. So this secret is going to be our certificate that we are going to be using across the cluster. And once we specify the secret name, we can specify the DNS name, which is the cluster demo live. And we also want to specify the issuer reference. In our case, we named this let's encrypt issuer. If we look at this cluster issuer that we created earlier, and we say that the kind is the cluster issuer. So now let's go ahead and apply the issuer as well as the certificate and see what happens. So I'm going to go back up to the root of the directory and I'm going to say apply Kubernetes cert manager. As you can see, the let's encrypt issuer as well as the user API cert has been created. So you can try to get the cluster issuer. And if you do a describe on this cluster issuer, you can see the Acme account was registered and the status is true and the type is ready. And let's see what certificate we have. And if we actually do a describe on the certificate, you can see the certificate has been issued successfully. And we can also confirm that the secret has been created. So if we grab for the TLS, we can see the user API TLS secret has been created. So now that we have this user API TLS secret, there's only one thing left for us to do, which is to specify this TLS secret in our ingress resource. 
So under spec, I'm going to add this TLS field. And here I can say for which hosts, in our case, that is going to be cluster demo dot live. And then we can specify the secret name. In our case, this will be user API TLS. And once you have added that, I can do apply Kubernetes ingress user API dot YAML. And that's going to reconfigure our ingress resource. And we can confirm that everything is working by making a curl request to this HTTPS endpoint. And as you can see, it's returning the data that we want from our endpoint. So I didn't go too much detail into how our cert manager requests for the certificate and fulfills the challenges. For any of you who might be interested in how cert manager works under the hood, I'm going to leave a link to this page that describes how the cert manager introduces these two custom resource types, the orders and the challenges, and it describes the challenge lifecycle and how things work under the hood. And that's all I have for this video. I hope that was helpful. Thank you all for watching.